Hello and welcome. This is uh, Jared Rasher. I have the What Do I Know Games of Geekdom blog. I also have the What Do I Know About Actual Play video series on YouTube. Uh, currently, if you're watching what I'm doing, we are running Shadow of the Demon Lord. And I wanted to record this video because in the course of running Shadow of the Demon Lord, I've also done a few reviews on my blog for various Shadow of the Demon Lord products. The products that I've reviewed on my blog include A Glorious Death, Exquisite Agony, Hunger in the Void, Terrible Beauty, uh, Forbidden Rules, Demon Lord's Companion, Tombs of the Desolation, and Uncertain Faith. One of the reasons I wanted to highlight these is because Schwab Entertainment has done an extremely consistent job of putting out high quality material, and I think given that Robert Schwab has a good history in the role playing industry, and the fact that he kind of struck out on his own to do this particular project, I think he's done an amazing job. There is a very strong consistency of vision and purpose for all of these products. You get very clearly the tone and the way the, the game should be coming across to people in all the products. And it's very easy, if someone is interested in dark fantasy that deals with more adult themes that might be veering into the horror side of things, if someone is already interested in that, and they are interested in fairly traditional mechanics but expressed in a very elegant and simple way, it is difficult not to recommend this game to them. It's, it's really that good. Uh, the scores that I gave those products, almost all of those received a four. I'm really hesitant to ever give out five stars because, to me, five stars are something that it's among the greatest role-playing products I have ever seen in my lifetime. I, I don't like to give out five stars because I think it cheapens the effect of five stars. That said, among all of these, for all of the consistent fours that I've given almost all of the products in this line... I gave Uncertain Faith a 5. Uncertain Faith is the product in this line that specifically details religions and religious career paths and extra spells in this in the uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord setting. And it just does such an amazing job of presenting it. And I'm going to get into it a little bit more about why it specifically, in contrast to the setting, is such an outstanding product. Uh, uncertain uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord in general is a very dark setting. Essentially, the kind of assumed path that most campaigns are going to take is that the world is ending, it's becoming more and more corrupt. The heroes may or may not stop that by the time the campaign ends, but essentially most sessions are going to, or most campaigns are going to be about 11 adventures. Whether it's 11 sessions or 11 actual sessions, there is kind of this finite ending to the campaign. And it really plays towards, are you going to save the world? Are you going to revel in how it burns? Um, are you going to accept corruption? Are you going to go insane by the time you stop all this from happening? It's not just the traditional fantasy, oh, we're the heroes and we're going to save things. It's, we're the heroes, are we going to do some terrible things for the greater good? Are we going to get completely overcome by this evil that is encroaching on us? And it does this really, really well. But what I have noticed is in settings that have this kind of dark tone and dark theme, it's very easy to get lost in that dark tone to the point where it's almost depressing to read through the material. It becomes kind of oppressive to dwell in that setting for too long. And Shadow of the Demon Lord has done a very, very good job of making the setting interesting and diverse enough that you are interested in learning new things even though you know the crux of the storyline is that this world could end and even if it doesn't end it's gotten to a very bad place. One of the reasons that I really really like Uncertain Faith is that ironically, and I won't give away any of those things here, but there are some real gut punch things in the setting about Oh, here's a bastion of good. But the truth of it is actually this. Here is something that most people think about the universe. But the truth of it is actually this. And those things are... When you read them, they are fascinating the way they are presented. But they are... They're almost emotionally draining at times when you're not expecting them. Because 
even for a horror setting, if you're thinking we could save the world, you're starting to think maybe there is some good. Maybe there is something right here. And then you find out, but it's not there. It's not that thing. And what Uncertain Faith did a really good job of doing is that in all of this darkness, in all of this corruption, and this is all still here, we're not giving you a pass. But at the same time, this is what faith does for people. This is the purpose of religion when it's good. This is how religion can go bad, but this is why it continues to persist. And this is what it adds to the setting and to the world. And it's it's a fascinating philosophical discussion. And despite the fact that it doesn't really flinch from the way gods and cosmology and corruption works in the setting, it still somehow is somewhat uplifting because... If you can get past the darkness and the destruction and you do the things you're supposed to do, you may not be proud of what you did. You may have to do a lot of work to fix the damage that you have done. But it's almost saying that if you can get through the worst of the storm, everything's not okay. It's not a happy ending, but it's not an ending. It's something where if you keep plugging forward and keep working harder, maybe you can make things better. There's not like a quick fix that makes everything better. But everything is not completely dark and destructive. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's just that it's a candle and you have to make sure the wind doesn't blow it out. And I know I use a lot of euphemisms to explain uncertain faith, but it just does a really good job of discussing the differences between the different pantheons, the different gods, the reason for religion in the setting, the reason that people hold on to certain beliefs. And it's just, it's really fascinating. I think it's actually a good read for anyone interested in seeing how to present um, deities and religion and faith in a fantasy setting, and especially because it doesn't overly focus on the gods. It's not, here's the god, here's his alignment, here's what he grants his followers. There's a little bit of that, not so much on the god's stats, but on what the followers get and the difference in their spell. But there's really a focus on, here is what this religion believes. Here is what heretics of this religion believe. This is what is commonly believed but isn't dogma. There's a lot more practical information on religion instead of game rule information or super high level information. And I think all of that is really, really great. And the other thing that I have to say about Uncertain Faith is... It is just a gorgeous book. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's not just the artwork. The artwork is is absolutely beautiful, as is the artwork across the entire Shadow of the Demon Lord line. But the formatting and just the presentation of the book, it is a gorgeous book to look through. And I don't I don't own the hard copy yet. I have it coming, but I don't yet have a copy of the physical book. But just in PDF form, where it's a lot harder to get across that impressive look and feel. The PDF is just a joy to look at, and it was a joy to read through. And that's another thing, zooming back out from Uncertain Faith, going back to the line of Shadow of the Demon Lord products again, the Shadow of the Demon Lord books do a really, really good job of being good reads. They are meaty enough that you get setting details, but they're zoomed out enough that that doesn't dwell too much on too many details. You don't feel like this is a bare-bones setting, and... While I really like it, I'm going to contrast it to this. Um, the 13th Age setting, for example, is kind of a bare-bones setting. You get the high-level concept of it, you get the icons, you get the countries, but it's intentionally certain things are not set in stone because every time you play 13th Age, it could be a different alternate version that looks a lot different within certain constraints. And that's a good approach for 13th Age. This isn't that... There's a lot higher level of detail, and yet it still is open enough for a lot of interpretations where you could play in the setting multiple times and twist the dials a little bit, but there's still more information to hang things on, more specifics to hang things on. And I really, really like that about it. And it's still, despite the level of detail, some things are really interesting and they're fascinating to read, but the level of details you get lost even in a good book. And I rarely feel like I ever get lost in the details in a Shadow of the Demon Lord supplement. And that's what was really impressive about that. Um, just to side note on another thing, the Hunger in the Void book, which is all about demons and the void, which is like this absolute nothingness between worlds that is where the demons come from and what are looking to consume realities. I thought that was going to be a hard sell. I figured, oh, there's going to be some neat demonic creatures and maybe some spells. But information on the Void won't be that interesting. 
and the information on the void is actually really fascinating at some time I would love to run a campaign that uses some of the information that actually goes into the void and when you can take something that is literally supposed to be this void between worlds that's just trying to eat everything up and that's normally just kind of like this primordial force but it actually seems like kind of a compelling campaign setting that is a really really great way to have presented that information so since I'm running the game, since I've done all of these reviews, um, I'm going to present the, the links to my reviews if you're interested, um, if you want to take a look at it. But I just wanted to record this specifically as I'm running it and as I'm doing these reviews. I've just been really, really consistently impressed with this product line. So if you like fantasy, if you like dark fantasy, if you like dark fantasy that has a little bit of horror elements to it and is going to have some adult themes to it, and some of the art does get adult in multiple ways, uh, and I mentioned that in some of the reviews, but if all of that is still within your wheelhouse of things that you like, and you like traditional mechanics, but not necessarily complicated traditional mechanics, you really, really should check out this game because it is it is really interesting. I've mentioned it before that it's kind of a, I've described it as, as kind of a bastard hybrid of D&D &D and uh, Warhammer Fantasy 2nd Edition. That is, it, it's overly reductive. I don't know any other way to really explain it because it is, it's more than that, but it's simpler than that. But it's just an extremely consistent game line. It's a good solid read. It's a good solid set of rules. And all of the products just look really gorgeous. Um, the initial products have a more similar and consistent theme where they just kind of swap the color palettes on them. And they still look really, really impressive. But as they move into things like Hunger in the Void and Uncertain Faith, the individual books are formatted more thematically for the topic that they're dealing with. And those go from looking, oh, wow, this looks really great, to, man, that is just nailing the theme. And it actually increases my ability to enjoy this and to stay in the mood to read about this topic. And I just think it, it's, it's been an amazing product line so far. I'm looking forward to more stuff coming out from it. And I just wanted to go ahead, since I'm still running the game, and I've done all those reviews now, to kind of do this video plug. If you are interested in reading the reviews, um, I would greatly appreciate it. Other than that, there's no reason to take my word for it, but the more voices that sing the praises of this game, the better. So if I don't count for much, at least go out there and see how many other people are saying how awesome this thing is. Thank you very much.